And we're back for some exciting JFET biasing. All right. Before we get started, let's put down a couple of equations we looked at last time because we're going to need them. First, our transconductance equation. ID is equal to IDSS times the quantity 1 minus VGS over VGS off. That quantity is squared. And also the GM0 equation, right? That was defined as negative 2 IDSS divided by VGS off. All right, so we're going to look at three biasing schemes. Uh, they each have their pluses and minuses. To keep this simple, we're going to use the same transistor for all three circuits. And we will just say that we go in lab and we measure the following. The IDSS is 10 milliamps. The associated VGS off is minus 2 volts. So using this equation, we can determine GM0. All right, so that's going to be negative 2 times 10 milliamps over negative 2 volts. That's just 10 millisiemens. Very good. All right, our first circuit is really the simplest circuit, and it's referred to as fixed gate bias. All we really are going to do is put a fixed negative voltage on the gate of the transistor and see what happens, basically. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a 20-volt power supply. This is a VDD. I've got a drain resistor over here that's 1K ohm. This is going into our FET. The source of the FET is going to go to ground. And then here's our gate. There's going to be a 1 mega ohm resistor feeding that. And then I'm going to have a negative power supply attached over here to the gate. And we're going to make that minus 1 volt, or the way it's drawn, just 1 volt. How do we find out the value of um, uh, our current, for example, or the drain source voltage? You know, those are useful things to determine. Well, basically, we're going to rely on this equation. Now, we had that curve. So here's our ID. Here's the VGS. And we know that looks something like this. The IDSS is up here. We know that's uh, 10 milliamps for this device. Um, the VGS off is down here. We know that's minus 2 volts for this device. So what we're doing is we're just going to put a value over here that's minus 1 volt. Now, if you're wondering, hey, what about this 1 meg? Isn't there a voltage drop across that? Practically speaking, no. Because remember, you're looking into the uh, gate source. That's a reverse bias PN junction. So the resistance of that is through the roof. You know, for DC, you're looking at thousands of mega ohms, basically, if not more. So we can basically say that the gate current is zero. And that's true for all the circuits that we're going to see. Right? That bias current is basically zero. If that's the case, then the drop across the one meg must also be zero, which means that we have a negative one volt applied directly to the gate of the FET. And since the source is at ground, we can then say, hey, VGS here must be minus 1 volt, whatever this power supply is. So we get that minus 1 volt. And then we just come over here and find out what the heck the current is. So we can just use this formula. Right? The ID over here would have to equal the IDSS, which is 10 milliamps. 1 minus our VGS, which is minus 1 volt over the VGS off of minus 2 quantity squared, right? So a lot of minuses here, but that's going to turn into 1 half, which is then squared, which is a quarter. So the ID on this is going to be a quarter of 10 milliamps or 2.5 mils. Now that's going to produce a voltage drop. Right? That is coming down like this. Remember, the drain and the source currents are basically the same value. So that's coming down like this. That's going to produce a drop. 1K times 2.5 mils, or 2.5 volts. So if this end is at 20, 
this end, in other words, the drain voltage, would have to be 17 and a half. Now, of course, because the source is also at ground, VDS equals VD also equals 17 and a half volts. Okay, pretty straightforward. The problem with this kind of bias is as follows. Suppose we have another device, all right? Just like with bipolar transistors, there's variation in beta. Well, with uh, JFETs, there's a variation in IDSS and VGS off, and it can be quite large. Now, you can get small signal devices where the VGS off variation might be from minus 2 to minus 8 volts. The current variation might be from, you know, 2 milliamps to 20 milliamps. So there's a big variation here. So just to throw one out here, you know, you might have another transistor in that bin that looks like this. Well, you know, maybe that off voltage is minus 3, minus 4 volts. Maybe this current up here is, uh, you know, 15, 20 milliamps. Well, you're still biasing this thing as a fixed gate of minus 1 volt. So well, this thing comes up to here, and here's our new ID value. It's going to be much larger in this particular case. That's going to have a much larger value for this voltage. The VDS is going to shrink down. So this is not going to be a very stable bias. All right. Very simple, but not very stable. At the other end of the spectrum, so to speak, the other extreme is to use a current source bias. We do know of one circuit that produces very nice constant current, and that's the uh, two supply emitter bias bipolar circuit. So we're going to exploit that essentially. There's the FET. Once again, I'm going to put a big resistor out here in the in the uh, gate. So that'll be a, like a mega ohm. I'm going to use that 20 volts again. Um, we'll use maybe a 2k this time. And what I'm going to do down here is throw in a bipolar transistor. And there's going to be a, a emitter resistor and then a negative power supply down here. Uh, we'll use some nice easy numbers like 1k and minus 5 volts. So here's the deal. This thing is going to act as a current source and it's just going to pull a current down through here. Now, the emitter and collector currents we know are basically the same. Well, the collector is the source here. And of course, the collector and the drain are the same current. So whatever we get for the emitter current, that's what we get for the drain current. Beautiful. And since I know this is going to be very, very stable, no matter what FET I put in here, we're going to get the same value of current, right? So this constant current source is going to work out really well. We don't need a base resistor here since we're never going to put a signal into the base of this bipolar. Um, so this base is literally at, at voltage zero. The um, emitter will be about seven tenths less, right? We'll have about minus 0.7 from the emitter to ground. And the other end of the 1K is at minus five. So that means we would have about 4.3 volts sitting across this resistor. And that divided by 1K tells us that the current would have to be about 4.3 milliamps. We pass the 4.3 mils through the 2K up here and that will work out to 8.6 volts. So you've got a 20 volt up here you subtract the 8.6 and your drain voltage right from here to ground would be 20 minus the 8.6 or 11.4 volts. Now your source is not at ground in this case. Right? You could actually solve this equation backwards. You now know what ID is, you know what IDSS is, you know VGS off, you just solve this in terms of VGS and you'll actually know what your source voltage is, right? Because your source is, you know, whatever your VGS is, above the gate because the gate's tied to ground, okay? Once again, that gate current is really tiny, so this VG is zero. So whatever you get for VGS, that's what your source voltage is as an absolute. All right. Okay, so this is very stable. You throw in different FETs all day long. You can throw in different bipolar, bipolars all day long. You're always going to get 4.3 mils. What's the downside of this? Well, if we do this same little plot, it might not be immediately apparent, but there is an issue here. So here's our first device. All right. Once again, you know, I got my minus two volts. Here's my minus one volt. I come up here, you know, I, I get the current in this case, 4.3 mils. Um, oh, excuse me, not, uh, not minus one. 
we didn't calculate that, my bad. We actually are going this way, 4.3 mils, and then we get, you know, whatever that works out to. It might be minus one, probably not, but whatever. Um, what if I have another transistor? So that transistor is, you know, maybe out like this. Well, since we're setting the current, this thing comes out like this, and now we get an entirely different value for the VGS. Well, is that a problem? Well, here's the deal. As it turns out, when we see this in uh, the AC analysis, right, for our amplifiers, what we really want is not so much um, a perfectly stable ID. What we really want is a nice stable GM value, right? Remember, we came up with the equation for, for GM. Um, a quick reminder here, right? GM was equal to GM0 times 1 minus VGS over VGS off. No square. Right. I really want the GM to be stable. It's kind of like having our prime E stable in a bipolar. And that value, GM, is essentially the slope of um, a point on this, right? So if you got something like this, that slope, that tells you what GM is. You know, if you go steeper up the curve, you're going to have, you know, a steeper value there. You're going to get a different value for GM. Right, that's why G, GM0, you know, up here at the top of the, each curve, that's the biggest value of, of uh, transconductance, GM0. So in this case, what happens is uh, this GM and this GM won't be the same value. So you've got a nice constant current, but the GM isn't constant. So, mm, not the best. Unless you really need constant current. You know, this will work out. All right, third version to look at. This is called self-bias. It's very simple. It really only requires uh, one more resistor than, than um, the fixed gate, and it doesn't require a second power supply. So this is a, a nice little approach. So it's a very simple circuit, and it turns out that um, although the GM value is not perfectly stable, it's reasonably stable. You know, it's a nice trade-off in terms of complexity. So we have three resistors, one in the drain, one in the gate, one in the source, all right? Um, I'm going to throw in, you know, what the heck, once again, a, a one meg. We'll use a 20 volts over here like I did last time. 1K, and I'm going to put a 200 ohm resistor down here. All right. Again, we're going to use that same transistor. All right, there's three ways you can go about solving this. Um, in the book, we look at... Um, a nice analytical solution. There is a formula for this that you can use for using different values like GM0, for example. Um, there is a graphical solution, which I'm going to look at right now. And there is also an iterative uh, approximation technique you can use if you didn't have a graph handy, for example, or that formula. The formula is kind of long. There is a proof of it in the text, but it's not the kind of thing you would uh, be interested in sort of committing to memory. You know, it's just a little bit too complex for that. But nonetheless, basically here's what happens. The reason why it's called self-bias is, imagine you have some current flowing down through here. Well, that's going to set up a voltage drop across this 200 ohm resistor, the source resistor. Now, once again, your gate voltage is going to be virtually zero. Because, again, your gate current is zero. So, you know, this could be uh, a nanoamp. All right, a fraction of a nanoamp, you put that through a megohm and you're still talking, you know, a fraction of a millivolt over here. So it's virtually zero volts. If that's the case, then whatever the drop is across the 200, that's what sets up the VGS, right? So this is going to have a current coming down like this, which will produce, produce a polarity plus to minus like that, meaning the source is positive with respect to ground, which is where the gate is. So this gives you a negative VGS, right? It gives you this. That's just what we need. This is why it's called self-bias. This current sets up a VGS, all right? Um, to use this same kind of um, plot, you wind up with this sort of deal. Here's your curve. Oops, a little sloppy there. Um, so you have some value of VGS, which gives you a value of ID, and that value of ID produces that original VGS. As a matter of fact, you can do this uh, graphically. If you plotted this 200 ohm, right, using your current voltage, uh, 
that um, inverse slope, you'd get something like this, and right where that point is, that's the ID VGS pair that satisfies this. So as an approximation technique, you could just sort of assume a value. You could say, well, I think VGS is, you know, half of VGS off. Like in this case, you would assume it's minus one volt. All right. Well, if I had minus one volt over 200 ohms, that would be, um, you know, five volts. Excuse me, five milliamps. Now you could take that and using your calculation over here, see what that would derive in terms of, of required VGS. It's probably, unless you're very lucky, not going to be the exact value that you initially guessed. So now you would modify your guess a little bit, do this again. So it's an iterative process, right? You do this two, three, four times, and you could get pretty close to the value fairly quickly. Um, eh, a little labor intensive, maybe. Um, on the other hand, we can use this thing called self bias graph. So what this does is it plots that rather large equation I was mentioning a moment ago. And we have a graph that looks something like this. Now on this axis, this is the ratio of drain current to the maximum, ID over IDSS. And this axis is GM0 times RS, that biasing resistor. So what you would do is um, figure out your GM0, RS, hit the curve, Come over here. This would tell you the ratio of IDS, ID to IDSS. Um, you know the IDSS, so you can just calculate your ID. Now that you know the ID, you can use Ohm's law to find the various voltage drops you're interested in. So in our case, uh, GM0 we found was 10 millisiemens. And RS is just the DC value here at 200 ohms, 0.2K if you prefer. So that's going to give you, uh, if you thought of that as 0.2K, the Ks in the least cancel, it's 0.2 times 10, which is 2. So I would simply find two on here, bring this up and over. And this works out to approximately 0.38. So the drain current, right, since I know that's what the ratio is, is 38% of IDSS, which is 10 milliamps. In other words, is 3.8 milliamps. Okay, so uh, I could just use Ohm's law at this point and say 3.8 mils times the 1K. All right, that's the drop on the drain resistor. So that's 3.8 volts, which means the drain would have to be 3.8 under the 20 volt source. Okay, so that's just 20 minus 3.8 which is going to be 16.2 volts. Um, that's, again, drain to ground, so the drain source voltage. What's the source? Right, what's Vs? I mean, this is Vd minus Vs. What's Vs? Vs, again, Ohm's law. I've got my 200 ohm, and I have the known current through it, since drain and source currents are the same. So I can just take the 200 ohm times the, uh, where is it, 3.8 mils? Right, and that'll work out to uh, about three quarters of a volt, 0.76 volts. So if I just subtract those out, subtract the 0.76 from 16.2, uh, we'll get 15.44 volts for drain source. All right. So that works out pretty well. Now, you know, getting back to this idea, what happens if you had a different device? You know, something like this. Ooh, that's awful straight. That should have more of a curve to it. But in any case, um, you know, what you see, of course, is different values. So back here in the original fixed gate, you know, all of the change occurs in ID, and we get a lot of fluctuation in the GM. In the current source, you know, the I, uh, ID is constant, so all of the fluctuation is in the VGS, and we still get some um, change in the GM value. Over here in the self-bias, we get a little bit of both. In other words, the, the Drain current has some fluctuation, and the uh, gate source voltage has some fluctuation. And, you know, the GM will move a little bit, but it won't move as much, um, for example, as, as it would over here. So this is a fairly simple circuit. Um, it's probably the, the most clunky to solve on a bias, but as far as overall performance, it's pretty nice because it's simple and you have a fairly decent stability on the thing as far as both the DC and the AC part, this GM part.
there is a, a variation on this. Um, we've sort of run out of room here, but there is a variation on this where we sort of augment this with a negative power supply. And essentially what that does is gives you a little bit more control. If you extended this out, you would um, be able to plot the resistor value here it would be offset by whatever the negative power supply here would be. So this offset would be out here and you'd have the resistor coming like this. So you could actually get something that's a bit flatter and yet that would give you higher currents. And if, if this is done correctly, you can get really nice stable uh, GM values out of that. Okay. All right. So that gives you a nice little smorgasbord of, of uh, biasing types, things that you can do with this, all based on our device equations. So remember these equations, right, like this green one, these two over here, these are device equations. They work for you know, any kind of bias. You know, some of these other things that we're doing down here, you know, like a self-bias graph, these are specific to that kind of bias. You can't apply a self-bias graph to, you know, a fixed gate um, bias circuit. All right. So make a distinction between those two things. All right, uh, the follow-up video on this is going to involve uh, AC analysis of these circuits. Just as we did in bipolars, we can make um, voltage amplifiers and we can also make buffers, right? So we had common emitter amplifiers, common collector amplifiers. Here, we're going to have um, common source amplifiers, common drain amplifiers, right? So we'll look at those next time.